All right, this video is looking at numerical solutions to integration, starting with the rectangle rule. So this is um, an option if you can't integrate the function that you've been given. Um, and obviously, you should always try to integrate with algebra and get an exact solution. Numerical solutions are only an estimate. But if you have a function that's not possible to integrate, we can use numerical solutions instead. Now, for the sake of being able to um, keep the example fairly straightforward, I am going to use a function which we could integrate algebraically so that we can compare the, the method that's being used here. But normally you'd be doing a, a function that you can't integrate. So we are going to do um, y equals e to the x. Now, if our function um, is equal to y, then we get a picture like this. So we've got the graph of y equals e to the x. And say we want to estimate the area under the graph um, between 0 and 3. So we want to estimate this area here. Now if we didn't know our rules of integration for e to the x, we wouldn't be able to work that out. But what we could do instead is instead of working out that area, we could split it up into rectangles. So let's say split it into three rectangles that cover these gaps 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Now, how could we use rectangles to estimate the area under that curve? So you might be tempted to say, OK, well, at 1, we'll go up to the curve and we'll go along here and that rectangle will be our estimate. And at 2, we'll go here and we'll make that rectangle our estimate. But you can see on each of them, we would be overestimating the curve fairly significantly. So a better way to do this is actually to go halfway. So if we go halfway between 0 and 1, we'll get more of an average. So we'll get a rectangle like this. So we've got some that's over the curve and some that's under the curve. So that a little bit of it cancels out and we get a better estimate. And then the same with the next rectangle from 1 to 2. We go halfway between and we make that the top of our rectangle and we find that area underneath. And then between 2 and 3 we go halfway, make that the top of our rectangle, find that area. Now if we find all of the areas of those rectangles, we can add them up to get an estimate for the area under the curve. Now it's a good idea to keep your working out orderly with these to keep track of what you're doing. So um, I've set up this table to keep track of it. So our rectangle number one, the width of that is one, the midpoint is 0 0.5. The height of our rectangle here is the y value at 0 0.5. So it's whatever the curve would be when x is 0 0.5. So if we do e to the 0 0.5, we will get that height. So e to the 0 0.5 that's 1.649. And if we're working out the area of the rectangle, we do the width multiplied by the height. Well, the width is just one, so our area for this one is 1.649. I've kept it fairly simple. So the widths of all of these are actually just going to be one. Uh, the midpoint for our second rectangle here is 1.5, making the height um, e to the 1.5 which comes to 4.482. Uh, then we do the base times the height. So we've got um, an area of 4.482. Right, rectangle number three also has a width of one. The midpoint here is 2.5. E to the 2.5 is 12.182. So our height multiplied by the width is still 12.182. So we've got our three different rectangles. Now we total them up. And we get 18.313. So our area under that curve is approximately 18.313 units squared. So you can split this up into smaller rectangles to get a closer approximation. So if we'd done, we could have done six rectangles across here and made each of the widths 0.5. We would have got those midpoints, worked out the heights, done the width times the height to work out each area and add them up. Obviously, the more rectangles you do, the closer your estimate would be because you're getting uh, those narrower intervals that are getting closer and closer to being exactly on the curve.
The next video is going to look at an even better estimate, which is called the trapezium rule, which instead of using rectangles, we use trapezia instead to get a better approximation to what that curve might be.